thoughts about what I said, really about anything, um, go. And keep in mind, I'm actually a university professor by profession. I'm just on leave from the business school. So I am very used to standing in front of a lecture hall where no one is sitting in the front row and just talking until the 75 minutes are up. But we'll give you a chance. Um, you're on the record of, as saying a strong Toronto is good for the country, it's, it's good for Calgary itself. Um, not talking about the current office holder. However, people keep wishing in this city, they, they ask, I wish Nenshi was mayor, I wish Nenshi was mayor. What can you hope that the next term of Toronto City Council can do for the city to make the country better? I'm glad you asked about the city council. Um, I'm very glad you asked about the city council because if I could offer some wisdom from afar, as if I have any wisdom, one of the challenges that you're facing here, that you had been facing here in Toronto um, before the most recent um, fun, is that your city council had allowed itself to get distracted. Remember that the mayor in Canada, the mayor is a very interesting political role. Most people don't think about this, but with very few exceptions, in the Canadian parliamentary system, mayor is the only job that is elected by everyone that you represent. You're not elected in a ward or in a constituency. And because in most parts of Canada there are no political parties, it means it's just you. So every voter in Calgary had a chance to vote for or against me, personally. And their choice was, do I like that guy or do I not like that guy? Not about political parties, not about uh, anything else. And so as a result, people have a great deal of ownership of their mayor. But remember, too, that it's not an executive role, it's a legislative role. So I don't have a cabinet, I don't have a caucus, nobody reports to me except my chief of staff, um, I don't have ministries uh, that I look after, it's a purely legislative role. So as a result, the true power in our system lies with the city council. And I can only get stuff done if I convince seven of my council members to go along with me. I happen to think that's a good thing. I happen to think that means that my policies and my ideas have to get stress tested in the community and we have to do together what's best for the community. But I will tell you that we have pretty passionate debates at my city council. Once a decision is made, the decision is made. And many, many times I've had to stand in a scrub in front of a bunch of reporters and defend something that I voted against because it was the will of council. And that was a big challenge with your city council before. It had allowed itself to get caught up in these ridiculous partisan battles. 45 member councils, gigantic. And they would have sometimes 23 to 22 votes. That's wrong. Clearly, if you're 23 to 22, it means you haven't thought through the idea well enough to understand what's right for the majority of people. I will tell you that I think that your council, in the most recent months, has acquitted itself very well uh, in terms of saying, we just got to keep running the city and we've got to get this work done. But that's what I would suggest to council, is just don't let yourself be distracted. Bus has still got to run. Garbage's still got to get picked up. Snow's still got to get cleared. Um, and you've got to continue to do the work that keeps this city, this beautiful city, running every single day. Uh, and continues to have people want to work here, live here, and invest here. So that's really my advice. Set aside the partisan crap. Nobody cares about left wing or right wing. Nobody cares about shadow political parties um, on your council. They just care about getting the work done. Reach across the aisle, figure out what's the best thing to do, and just do it. I know that sounds naive, but once you let the politics and the future ambitions go, it actually becomes much easier to actually do the service, and I hope that's what we see. You guys have an unbelievably long election period ahead of you. Shocking how long it is. Um, in fact, I hear the thing to do this week is to announce you're running for mayor of Toronto. Um, that's my joke I'll make at my next speech. <laughs> but, because uh, they're all going to be there. <laughs> Find entertaining. Um, but in this election period, I hope that people will, again, set aside the shadow political parties, set aside the partisanship in the left versus right, and just talk about what they're going to do for the country, or for the, for the city, I should say. And I hope that Torontonians will really force their city council candidates, not just their mayor candidates, their city council candidates, to stand up for what's for a better city and to take account for their behavior 
that has led to that had led to the dysfunction of your city council. Thank you.